Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation on Morera's theorem and a winding number in complex analysis. So, in this particular presentation, I'm going to discuss, I'm going to state uh, this uh, theorem, which is known as the Morera's theorem, which is also known as the converse of Cauchy's theorem, and I'm going to discuss the concept called winding number, and I'm going to see, uh, explain as to how to find the winding number of a particular curve with respect to a point. To start with Morera's theorem. This is the statement, if f of z is a function of a complex variable continuous in a region D such that integral over c f of z dz equal to 0 for all closed curves c in D, then f of z is analytic in D. As you can see here, this statement uh, is uh, somewhat like uh, the converse of uh, the famous Cauchy's integral theorem which says that uh, if, uh, if uh, f of z is analytic inside a non-simple closed curve c, which is inside a, uh, inside a domain D, then integral over C f of z dz is 0. So here in Morera's theorem what we have is that if f of z is a function of a complex variable continuous in a region D such that integral over C f of z dz equal to 0 for all closed curves C in D, then f of z is analytic in D. So if f of z is in such a way that in this integral value is 0 for all closed curves C in D, then it so happens that f of z is analytic in D. So this is the statement of Morera's theorem. I am not dealing with the proof of this theorem right now. So I will uh, quickly move on to the other part in the presentation which is about the winding number. So first of all we will uh, define what uh, the winding number is. The winding number of a closed curve C about the point z equals z0 is an integer representing the number of times the curve C traverses about z0 in the anti-clockwise direction. What does this mean? So we are supposed to have a closed curve C and we are supposed to have a point z equals z0. So with respect to this particular point, we say that the winding number is an integer which gives you the number of times the curve traverses about z0 in the anti-clockwise direction. And uh, there has to be something which is very important that has to be remembered here. If the curve C is traverses in the clockwise direction about z equals z0 then the winding number is taken to be negative. So if the direction is anti-clockwise then the winding number is taken to be positive and if it is uh, traversed in the clockwise direction the winding number is taken to be negative. To understand this we take up uh, one or two examples. Yeah, Suppose this is a curve C1 as uh, given in this picture. As we can see here there are two points P and Q. We will try to see what the winding number of P and Q are, sorry, the winding number of C1 about the point P and about the point Q. Now when it comes to the point P, as we can see here, the curve C1 traverses once and twice about the point P in the anti-clockwise direction. So accordingly, the winding number of C1 about P is going to be 2. Now when it comes to the point Q, the winding number of C1 about the point Q if is given by 1 because about Q the curve is traversing only once in the anti-clockwise direction. Right? So accordingly the winding numbers of the curve C1 about P and Q are 2 and 1 respectively. So about P it is 2, about Q it is 1. Right? We will take up one more example now. Yeah. So, if we take this as a curve C2 as uh, given here, now with respect to the point P, if we try to find the winding number of C2, as we can see here, about P the curve C2 is, tra is traversing twice and both the times obviously the curve is traversing in the clockwise direction. So about the point P the winding number of C2 is going to be 2 but because it is traversed in the clockwise direction we have to take it as minus 2. So the winding number of C2 about the point P is minus 2. Likewise, when it comes to the point Q, as we can see here, C2 is traversed once, twice and thrice about the point Q in the clockwise direction. Therefore, the winding number of C2 about Q is minus 3. Right? And about R, as we can see here, C2 is traversing only once around uh, R, about R. Therefore, the winding uh, in the clockwise direction Therefore, the winding number of C2 about R is minus 1. 
right? So about P it is minus two, about Q it is minus three, and about R it is minus one, right? So this is how we define the winding number. But yeah, practically as we can see here, if we are given some cl some closed curve C, it's not very easy to check uh, uh, or find the winding number of that particular C about uh, uh, some uh, given uh, point uh, say P. So because of this, we are going to look at a very important result in complex analysis, which is going to give us the winding number of any closed curve C about a particular point P, right? So before that, this is uh, the notation for the winding number. So the winding number of a closed curve C about the point Z equals Z naught is denoted by N of C comma Z naught. So Z naught is a point and C traverses about Z naught. So if such is the case, N of C comma Z naught is what is called the, or is uh, how we denote the winding number of C, right? And as, when, as I was mentioning earlier, the winding number N of C comma Z naught is given by a simple uh, expression, N of C comma Z naught equals one by two pi i integral over C dz by z minus z naught. So this is how we are supposed to find the winding number of a curve C about a point z equals z naught without actually drawing the curve C and then counting the number of times C traverses about C z naught, right? So what you are supposed to do is you'll have to evaluate this integral one by z minus z naught dz around the curve C and you'll have to multiply that by one by two pi a and that number is going to give you the winding number, right? So this is the formula which will be used very frequently to find the winding number. Now we'll uh, discuss one or two problems where we find out the winding number of a particular curve about a particular point. Yeah, the first problem, find the winding number of the curve C mod Z equals two about the point Z equals one traverse in the anti-clockwise direction. So as we know, C which is mod Z equals two is a circle whose center is origin and radius two units and uh, z equals one is an interior point of c so if you look at it geometrically the curve traverses exactly once around or about z equals one in the anti-clockwise direction so the winding number is supposed to be one now we'll verify that using the formula that we discussed just before this problem yeah so the winding number is given by n of c comma one because we are supposed to find it about uh, z equals one so n of c comma one equals one by two pi i integral over c dz by z minus one right so this is the formula now here integral over c one by z minus one dz how do we evaluate this you can actually evaluate it by uh, literally uh, understanding what c is and uh, writing uh, z in terms of theta or r or uh, x or y and then evaluating it or you can actually simply use Cauchy's integral formula or integral theorem. Here, z equals one is an interior point of C because mod z equals two is a circle with radius two and center zero, z equals zero. So because z equals one is an interior point of C, we cannot apply Cauchy's integral theorem. So we'll apply Cauchy's integral formula here. So z equals one is an interior point of C. Therefore, by Cauchy's integral formula, n of c comma one, which is one by two pi a integral over c dz by z minus one is evaluated as one by two pi i into two pi i into f of one, where f of z is one, right? So because f of z is one, f of one is also going to be one. So effectively, this will be f of one and that is going to be one. So the winding number of this curve about z equals one is going to be one, right? We we'll discuss one more problem. A similar question: Find the winding number of the curve C, which is mod z minus one equals one about the point z equals three traversed in the anti-clockwise direction. Here, C is once again a circle, but uh, here uh, the center of the circle is z equals one, and the radius of the circle is one. So we are dealing with a circle whose center is z equals one and uh, radius one units, and the point of consideration is z equals three. So if you look at it geometrically, it is very easy to see that z equals three is going to be an exterior point of C. And because this C does not contain z equals three, then there is no point in uh, finding the winding number or it, it doesn't make sense to find the winding number because C does not uh, traverse around C. 
So if you still try, what to try to try to find the winding number, it so happens that the winding number will be zero because C does not traverse around C. Uh, C does not traverse around Z equals three at all, right? So the winding number is supposed to be zero. So we will verify that using the formula again. So the winding number is given by n of C comma three equals one by two pi i integral over C dz by z minus three. Here, as I mentioned earlier, Z equals three is an exterior point of C. Correct? It's very easy to verify this. This is a circle with center at z equals one and radius one. So obviously z equals three is an exterior point of C. And because z equals three is an exterior point of C, if you look at this integrand one by z minus three, if you take it as f of z, it is going to be analytic inside and on the given C. And because f of z is analytic inside and on C, it is uh, suitable to use Cauchy's integral theorem to evaluate this. And we know that if you have a function. Analytic inside and on a simple closed curve C, the value of the integral will be zero. So n of c comma three is one by two pi i integral over c dz by z minus three, which is going to be zero. This is by Cauchy's integral theorem, right? So this is how we are supposed to find the winding number of a given curve about a particular point. Fine. So with this, I'm going to stop with the. I'm going to end with this presentation. Go through the video once again. and get back to me if you are not able to follow any part of it thank you